Hi guys, welcome back. Today we will be having bonds and their valuation. What is a bond? A bond is a fixed income instrument that represents a loan made by an investor to an institutional borrower. The investor can be anyone in the public who wishes to lend the money for the purpose of earning interest. And borrowers of bonds generally are institutional, meaning to say they are either corporate or government agency borrowers. To understand what a bond is, we have to look things from the perspective of the issuing company as well as the investor. From the point of view of the company issuing the bond, this is a liability, while from the point of view of the investor, this is an asset. So a bond is both a liability and an asset depending on whose point of view are we talking about. Most bonds are fixed rate bonds, which means they generally pay a fixed coupon rate. Before we proceed further, it is important that we understand the following terms so that we may comprehend bond valuation better. Par value. Par value is the face amount at which the issuing entity will redeem the bond certificate on the maturity date. Note, this is not necessarily the market value of the bond. This is simply an amount that is stated in the bond certificate. Coupon interest rate. The coupon interest rate is the stated annual interest rate on the bond. This is generally paid semi-annually. Indensure is what we call the bond contract. The indenture contains covenants. Covenants are promises that restricts the actions of the borrower that can be of detriment to the lenders. Valuation of bonds. How do we arrive at the value of the bond? Well, just like other assets. Remember that the value of an asset is the present value of the future cash flows it is expected to generate. As such, the value of the bond is the present value of the future coupon payments as well as the par value it is expected to generate. The proper discount rate that we shall use is the yield to maturity, which is equivalent to the required rate of return on the bond. To demonstrate how bond valuation is to be made, let us refer to sample case 1. X Motors 1000 peso par value bonds have 5 years remaining to maturity. Interest is paid annually. The coupon interest rate is 10% and the required rate of return on the bond is 9%. Let's determine the value of each bond. To calculate such a value, we must prepare a timeline from year 0 to year 5. Remember, the value of any asset is the present value of the future cash flows it is expected to generate. So for years 1 through 5, it is expected that the bond will give the investor the coupon payments of 1,000 pesos times 10%, 100 pesos every year. At maturity, which is 5 years from now, the borrower or issuing company will return the principal of the bond, which is essentially its par value. 1,000 pesos. 
arriving at the value of the bond will mean, we have to take the present value of all of these future cash flows. Now, the required rate of return for this bond is lower than the coupon rate. It is 9%. Next, we have to calculate the present value of lump sum, PV lump sum, to be multiplied by the par value. For 9%, it's 0.6499. The present value of the annuity, PV annuity, to be multiplied by the coupon payments. For 9%, it is 3.8897. 100 times 3.8897, we have 388.97. 1000, the par value, times 0.6499, that would be 649.90. The total of these two present values is 1,038.87 pesos. This is the market value of the bond. Again, the value of the bond is the present value of all future coupon payments, as well as the par value to be received at maturity of the bond. Take note that in this scenario, our rate of return, which is 9%, coupon payment, which is 10%. If this happens, it is expected that the market value of the bond would be greater than its par value. So if it is paying 10% of par, and you are only requiring a return of 9%, naturally, you would be willing to pay more than the par value. Let us go to another sample case, number two, to demonstrate how this is done if the required rate of return will now be greater than the coupon rate. X Motors 1,000 peso par value bonds have a five-year remaining to maturity. Interest is paid annually. The coupon interest rate is 10% and the required rate of return on the bond is 11%. Let us arrive at the value of the bond. So again, we must prepare a timeline from year 0 to the maturity date of year 5. Coupon payments are 1,000 pesos times 10%. You would have 100 every year for the next five years. Next, the par value of the bond. 1,000 pesos will be given to the investor after the maturity of five years. To arrive at the value of the bond, we should take the present value of all of these future cash flows. This time, the required rate of return on this bond is 11%. The PV lump sum for 11% is 0.5935. The PV annuity for 11% is 3.6959. The coupon payment of 100 times 3.6959 would give us 369.59 present value. While for the par value, the present value is 0.5935 times 1,000, that's 593.50. Adding the two up, the value of the bond is 963.09 pesos. This time, you have to note that the required rate of return of the bond is greater than the coupon payment. This is the reason why the market value of the bond is less than the par value. Naturally, if you are going to require a rate of return greater than that of the coupon rate, obviously, 
to motivate you to take the bond, it should be valued at a lower amount than the part. Now, realistically speaking, bonds pay coupon on a semi-annual basis. That is, they pay it every six months. To demonstrate a more realistic scenario, let us have the following sample case. Number three. Why incorporated 1,000 peso par value bonds have two years remaining to maturity? Interest is paid semi-annually. The coupon interest rate is 10%. The required rate of return on the bond is 12%. Note that these interest rates expressed are in annual terms. Let us arrive at the value of the bond. Let us now prepare the timeline. This time, only for two years, but we have to look in between each year, considering coupons are paid every six months. So the coupon payments to be made would be 1,000 times 10%. This time, multiply it by one half. The investor will be receiving 50 pesos every semi annum until the end of the second year. The par value of 1000 pesos will be returned at the end of the second year as well. Hence, we are going to discount these cash flows using the required rate of return. Again, the coupons are to be paid semi-annually, so we have to adjust the discount rate. Rather than 12%, multiply by one half, you have 6%. So the PV lump sum for 6% is 0 0.7921. PV annuity is 3.4651. The coupon payments of 50 times 3.4651. This will give us 173.26. The par value of 1,000 multiplied by PV lump sum, 0.7921. That would give us 792.10. So the total value would be 173.26 plus 792.10, 965.36 pesos. This is the value of the bond. Now, once you are able to arrive at the value of the bond, you have to take note that this is not necessarily permanent. Factors in the economy can change, interest rates in the market can change, and other things that will have an effect on the bond's value. In the next video, we are going to talk about the risks that the investors face as a result of having a bond. For example, we have the price or interest rate risk, which is the risk that a rise in market interest rates will decrease the value of the bond. We also have reinvestment rate risk, the risk that a decline in market interest rates will decrease the income from a bond portfolio. We are going to elaborate this further in the next videos. Stay tuned, like, share, and subscribe.